Hi Space Cat, welcome back to my channel. Recently, Japan has announced that they're working on the world's first wooden satellite. So how exactly would that work and why would we want it anyway? In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about just that. So let's start. Japanese company Sumitomo Forestry has teamed up with Kyoto University to begin research into growing wood specifically for use in space. One of the people involved from Kyoto University is Takao Doi, who was selected to be an astronaut in 1985 by the Japanese space agency NASDA. Note that I didn't say JAXA, who are the current Japanese space agency. And this was a result from a merger between NASDA, the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science, and the National Aerospace Laboratory of Japan. DOI became the first Japanese national to conduct a spacewalk in 1997, and later the first astronaut to use a boomerang in space in 2008. But since 2016, he has held the position of professor at the Unit of Synergetic Studies for Space at the Kyoto University in Japan. Now, back to the space satellites. Right now, there are over 6,000 satellites orbiting around the Earth, and 60% of these are dysfunctional. Together with other debris larger than 10 centimeters in size, there are over 20,000 pieces of space junk that are actively being tracked, and many more that are not being tracked. Space junk is becoming a huge problem, and as satellites and launch capabilities become even cheaper, the number of satellites in space is just exploding. This space junk can be dangerous too, traveling at speeds of over 22,300 miles per hour. They can cause considerable damage in event of a collision, or even worse, the Kessler syndrome, where collisions cause a cascade of even more collisions. Thankfully, in more recent years, the United Nations and the World Economic Forum have guidelines and regulations in place for space sustainability. Satellites should be designed to minimize creation of space debris by deorbiting non-functional satellites to reduce collision with existing space debris and manufacturing them to burn up in our atmosphere on re-entry. Whilst this is in place now, many older satellites have not been built to burn up on re-entry. But even if they did, satellites are made up mostly of aluminium. When they burn up, they leave behind alumina particles that will float in the atmosphere for many years. These highly reflective particles can deplete the ozone over time. So developing wooden satellites is not a stupid idea. Wooden satellites would burn up in our atmosphere without releasing harmful substances or raining debris. Additionally, unlike aluminium, wood does not block electromagnetic waves, enabling the design of simpler satellites and better protection. Antennas and other mechanisms could be placed inside the wooden encasing rather than outside. Lastly, one important thing in satellite design is the isolation of electronic and magnetic noise of the instruments. Since wood has no electrical properties, it would be great for this. Nevertheless, wooden satellites are not without the challenges. In space, it's pretty important that the instruments are shielded from extreme temperatures of space and any radiation, in particular from the sun. Wood doesn't give any thermal insulation, but they can prevent direct sunlight from the sensitive internal components. The research team have placed their efforts into growing wood that can be made into a material that is both resistant to temperature changes and sunlight that the satellite would encounter in space. However, some other things will be just as challenging. Thankfully, wood is lightweight, but there is a worry about desiccation. Wood has water content, but in space, this water would be sucked out of the wood, and dry wood is known to crack. Over time, a wooden satellite would likely become fragile and lose its shape. Keeping this from happening and from cracking would have to be taken into account. Next, whilst in space we don't expect any external forces to act on the satellite, the outgassing of the water could potentially induce an external force, potentially causing the rotation of the satellite. And this is something we commonly see in asteroids and comets. 
Even if we could control this by providing a counterbalancing force, such as some small thrust, there is some additional concern of where the water would go. One worry is that the water could contaminate other components of the satellite, like the electrical instruments. And that would be pretty bad. So overall, even though the concept of wooden satellites is really intriguing and potentially addressing a huge issue on space sustainability, we are still a way off from pulling this off yet. The launch team hope to launch their first wooden satellite by 2023. That's right around the corner and I'm excited to see what they can come up with. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Let me know in the comment section below what you think we could do to help the growing space junk problem. And in the meanwhile, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.